Are you ready? Greetings. Welcome to Teshua Community. Again, I'm Ima Rafaya, and I'm coming back to you again live to share with you daughters about the present and special help of Almighty Yah. But before we begin, I'd like to share a scripture with you daughters. And it's coming from Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And it reads, I beseech you therefore, O Hokim, by the Hasid of Almighty Yah, that you present your bodies a living offering, Kodash, acceptable unto Yah, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that tough and acceptable and perfect will of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. 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 Now the daughters of Tezion, we have a selection we'd like to sing to you all. Hallelujah. 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 You are to walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew drops, the heart seeks shine bright. Shine all around me by day and by night. Yashua, the light of this world. To Almighty Yah. You say, Well, I'm all by myself. Yah says, I have many. We're scattered abroad, daughters. We have some in the north, some in the east, some in the west, some in the south. Let us just be faithful and committed that we can be that special help from Almighty Yahweh. And you say, Special helper. What does she represent? What kind of personality does she have? Well, she's a companion a partner, a supporter, an aid, sharing great intimate of affections, a friend that are hobbles at all times. Can I tell you that's a great treasure when you have a friend that are hobbles at all times. And when you have a true friend, they're going to correct you? Yes. They will share things with you that they don't just share with anyone. Yes. I can truly say my ish is my friend. We have intimate conversations. The things that I can't share with no one else, I can share with him. And can I tell you, he will give me the righteous judgment. He'll tell me about my feelings and my emotions. And then he'll say, 
the real judgment is either it's right or it's wrong. Hallelujah. Totally. Yeah. So what is a companion? What is more valuable than a companion? She is better than a friend or a companion. Shirak 40 and verse 23. A friend or companion never meets one or anyone with a miss. Inappropriate feelings, find fault all the time, out of order, wrong attitude. No, but a true friend, a wife with her husband is better than them both. A true companion is represented by these qualities. A participant to help, she partakes with her ish, she's a sharer, a comrade of fellowship, all that Yahweh is to his Ishaw, Israel, his wife. So when we're walking in Torah truth and we're keeping all the commandments of Almighty Yahweh, then we are the wife of Almighty Yah. In the greatest battle, she is still a companion. She represents this kind of true care. You know, if you're going through battle, you want truly to have a friend that's going to stick by you. And they're going to help and assist you in all. Revelation, Gilyana, chapter 1, verse 9. I, Yakahan, who also am your brother, a companion in this tribulation, and in the kingdom and the patience of Yahshua Hamashiach, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of Yah, and for the testimony of Yahshua Hamashiach. She will go all the way. She will never depart or leave her ish, as it represents her in the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach. So when you have a true friend, when you truly have a true, true friend in the midst of a battle, they won't leave you. It's almost like when you're married, daughters, when you're married, your uh, ish, I'm sorry, your ish is your husband, even in sickness, in times of hardship, you don't give up. You don't throw in the towel and say, well, this is not what I expected. You stay until the end. Hallelujah. You care Hallelujah. for that ish. You wait on him hand and foot. You don't hire somebody to come in and do it for you. Whatever it takes, you deny yourself. You get rid of some of the heavy load that you have yes. so that you can take care of your ish Hallelujah. faithfully yes. as you made those vows to him the day that you married him. Yes. Hallelujah, Yahweh. So the title is The Present and Special Help of Almighty Yah. What is a true partner, a comrade and a friend that will stand by you at all times? A wife that is a special friend will always hover her ish. Even when she is upset, the same as Yahweh loves his people. Even though when we do things that are wrong, when we break the commandments of Almighty Yahweh, he, yes. he doesn't just cast us away. No, it's true. He gives us time to ponder what we've done. Yes. Oh, he's going to correct you. Yes. He's going to whip your backside. But he wants you to understand that you've done evil. Yes. And I want, he wants you to turn, shoot from your evil in your corrupt ways. Yes. That's why he gives us instructions from this Torah. Can I tell you, people will say, well, when Yahshua came, he did away with the book. But he did not. He came to fulfill the book. Yes. He said he hates our feast days, our birthdays, our anniversaries, our, our party for this, our party for that. The only feast days he tells us to keep is the feast days that he gives us. It's in Deuteronomy, it's in Leviticus. Those are the feast days he wants us to keep. Those feast days honor him. Your birthday parties, your anniversary, it doesn't celebrate him. There are many that die. And there are many that, that, are, that much afflictions are caused on them because they're keeping these days that they have made up. You know, growing up as a little girl, my mother told me that my birthday was special. And it was. She made it even more special than what it should have been. But can I tell you, it never brought any satisfaction to me. I just got things, and the more I got, the more I wanted. But can I tell you, once I came to the knowledge of this truth, and how we've learned to honor the feast days of Almighty Yahweh. I've been made free. I can truly say 
that I enjoy keeping the feast days of Yah yes. because they honor Him. Yes. Your birthdays doesn't honor Him. No. No. Your anniversary doesn't honor Him. No. You're upset because your husband really didn't get you what you wanted. Yes. You want more and more and more. You're never satisfied. But once you keep the feast days of Yah that honor Him, you'll learn to be content and you will be satisfied. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says Proverbs, Mishli 17 and 17. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. So brothers and sisters, they're going to always be at each other. Hallelujah. But once you come to the true knowledge of who Almighty Yah is, and why he has sent Yahshua HaMashiach, then you know how to love the brotherhood and the sisterhood. Yes. Hallelujah. Yachahan 10 and 15. It says, as the Father knows me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. This is Yahshua. So Yahshua came here to lay down his life for you and I. That we may understand this Torah truth. That will make you free. Once you learn how to keep the commandments of Almighty Yah, understand this Torah. Lay down your life. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about Almighty Yah. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay, this uh, special present help. She is a pillar, a supporter. She has great possession to, to her husband. She will hold her position in the midst of the battle. She will lay hold to him up in the battle. A supporter she is. Shirak 36 and 24. He who acquires a wife gets his best possession, a helper fit for him, and a pillar of support. So when a man finds a wife, a wife that walks in this Torah truth, he truly has a great treasure. He will learn how to love her. She will learn to honor him and support him. She will not make him ashamed. Hallelujah. I've seen many young people here in this community as they get that Ishaw, and as the Ish, as the Ish gets his Ishaw, they learn to grow together, yes. to love each other, to honor each other, yes. and the Ish is supposed to correct his Ishaw. Yes. That's what the man is about. Yes. The man is Almighty Yah's strength, yes. and the daughter is that special help when she learns to honor her Ish. Shirak 36 and 25, where there is no fence, the property will be plundered. And where there is no wife, a man will wander about inside. He will be sad. He will wander about, and he will be unhappy because he doesn't have the age. But if he keeps his mind and his heart set to please Almighty Yah, in due time, Yah will send him his special treasure. Proverbs 31 and 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. And as we daughters, as we learn this, and we understand our place as being that, that special ruby, we we'll understand it's not our dress. We don't need to draw attention to our bodies. But it's about us obeying the Torah truth. It says she will do him tug and not evil all the days of her life. She will learn her place in this walk of life. She will honor her man. It's not about what you can give me, but it's about the strength and him being the head of her life. See, a man is here to correct us. As Yah gave the children of Israel, Yahel, he gave them a shepherd, Moshe, to follow. It's only when they got out of hand that y'all said, no, I'm going to just make you wander in the wilderness till you understand you must follow the leader. Yeah. Don't get ahead of the leader. Yeah. Don't be like Cord, Dathan, and Abiram. They said, well, Moshe, you take too much on yourself. Let us, let us show you what to do. Why don't you try it our way? And because of their wickedness, their wickedness and their evil doings, Yahweh opened, he said, I'm going to do a new thing. And he did. He opened the earth and consumed all those followers 
a day fan, a bar ram, and cool. And cool. The earth opened up. You said, well, he saved the babies. No, he didn't. Because those children would have done the very same thing that their fathers do. Did. We have to understand that it, when we're teaching our children, we must teach our children this truth. If we let them do their own thing, they'll listen to rap music. Yes. They'll be dancing and uh, letting their britches hang off the backside. Yes. If you don't teach your children this Torah truth, yes. just like Dathan, Abiram, and Korah, they'll do the very same thing. They'll rise up and say, "The man, we don't need this man of y'all. We can do things on our own. Just what does a six-year-old know? No more than a 15-year-old. So we must train our children so they, they, they do not go the way of the world. That's what this Torah life is about. We have to get it in our minds here, be obedient to this truth, and we must train our children. Hallelujah. This virtuous woman, she rises early while it's yet night. She considers what she should do to make things go easy on her itch. She is not afraid of the snow, for she has put away the summer harvest for the winter. When she opens her mouth, the words of wisdom, kindness, correction, and the Torah comes out of her. Hallelujah. 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 So as we walk this way of truth, we'll learn how to speak. We won't just speak our mind of what we think or what I feel or what we're feeling for that day. Because, you know, all women have a monthly cycle. And sometimes because of the way you eat sometimes, there's certain things that make your emotions go yes, up, yes, down, yes. sideways. Yes. And when you go on your feelings and emotions, they, sometimes they're not just quite right. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as you learn the ways of truth, there will be a balance. Yes. You know what to say, you know when to speak, and when not to speak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So why is the wife such a special helper? The Yahweh compares her to his help. Yah knew that man needed a Ishar. He knew that. No, not a bad partner, but an Ishar, a woman of strength, a helper at all times. In his times of trial and tribulation, she can come and share with him this Torah truth. So Yahweh gave to Adam a wife for a help meet. A wife is a special gift of Yahweh to the man. Bereshit, Genesis 2 and 18. And Yahweh said, It is not tough that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. Hallelujah. 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 And before I go any further, you know, as we train our little ones, this Torah truth. You start when they're little, they will not depart. So at this time, we're going to have Zachariah. His mommy is Ahoana, and his daddy is Akmakas. And he's going to share with us the scripture verse that he has learned. Hallelujah. Well, so my scripture is coming from Yeshua, and it says, For thou is our judge. Yahweh is our bondgiver. Yahweh is our king. He will save us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we would like for uh, Dawid to come forth. This is Zakin Yaramia's man of strength, and his Ema is a whole Sakia. All right, Dawid. Shalom, shalom. Except Chai build the house, that Lady Yahweh build the house. Except child keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow. And so he giveth his beloved sleep. The children are a heritage of Yahweh, and the fruit of the wound is his reward. His arrows are in the hand of the mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that has a cool of fool of them, that shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Amen. <laughs> So here at Teshua, we give our children the Torah truth. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me get back to Bereshit, chapter, Genesis, chapter 2, verse 19. 
And out of the ground Yahweh formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was a name thereof. So Yahweh gave Adam that charge, and he named every living beast that's on these grounds. Yahweh gave him the charge and the command to do so. Bereshit, Genesis 2 and 20. And Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But Adam there was not found a help meet for him. What does Yahweh equate to a help meet? An Ezra, a supporter, an aid, an assist one, special helper, this is the kind of help a true help me represents. She is special like the special help from Almighty Yah. Scripture that show us what an Ezra is, a special helper, a promise of Yahweh. Kindness to his nation represents this help me from Almighty Yah. So we as the daughters of Tazai, we must work on that. We must learn to show kindness. You say, well, I show kindness to my sister. Is she in truth? True. You know, in, even in this little small gathering that we have, we must be kind one to yeah, another. Yes. Always willing to help. Yes. You know, as I was sharing with the daughters this morning, if I do a sister wrong, I'm not too full of pride because pride goes before fall. Yes. That I can't go back and get that right with that sister. You know, amongst your kinsmen, you do it. Yes. So with the family that Yah has chosen for you, you mean you can't do that? No, so I've yeah. learned over these years, my shortcomings, my sins, my errors, I have learned just to say that you're wrong, my friends. Yes. And you get it right. Why is yet day? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hosea 13 and 9. O Israel, you have destroyed yourself. But in me is your help that if you go to him. So we destroy ourselves with our own thoughts. Nobody knows my thoughts but me. And I create those thoughts every day. My actions and my deeds cause me to fall. It either can cause me to fall or it can cause me to do what is righteous before Almighty God. Hosea 13 and 10. I will be to you, Malik, where is any other that may deliver you in all your cities, and your judges of whom you said, Give me Malik and princesses. Hosea 13 and 11. And I gave you a king, King Saul, in my anger, and took him away in my wrath. Verse 12. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is hid. Verse 13. The pains and sorrow of a travailing woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay alone in the place of the breaking forth of children. That which is special. Strength to believers. She represents this type of help. A true helpmeet is this kind of strength to the ish of her love. Moshe speaks. Deuteronomy 33, verse 24. And as Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brothers and let him dip his foot in oil. Verse 25. Your shoes shall be iron and brass, and as your days, so shall your strength be. Verse 26. There is none like to Almighty Yah, no, not one. Yeshurun. Yeshurun was upright. He was an upright one, a symbol named for Israel to give by expression the ideal personality of Almighty Yah who rise upon the Shemayim to help, to help you. You and in His Excellency 
he rides the skies. Deuteronomy 33 verse 27, the eternal Yahweh is your refuge and underneath all the everlasting arms he shall thrust out the enemy from before you and shall say destroy them. Deuteronomy 33 verse 28 Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Yaakov shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heavens shall drop down the dew. 33 and 29. Happy are you, O Israel, who is like to you, O people delivered by Yahweh, the shield of your help, and who is the sword of your excellency, and your enemies shall be found liars to you, and you shall tread upon their high places. A pure daughter of Zion is the embodiment of of this kind of special help and protection. Psalms 33 verse 20, our nephesh waits for Yahweh. He is our help and our shield. To Helium Psalms 33 21, for our left shall greatly rejoice in him because we trust in him so when we truly trust in Almighty Yah, He is our help and He is our strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's not something you can do once a month, once a week. It's something we must practice every day of our lives. I've been young and now I am old. Never have I seen Yah see forsaken or his seed out there in bread. Yes. Hallelujah. I can truly say over these many years that Rayak and I have been married. My marriage has been excellent. You said, have you had any sorrows and pains? Why, sure I have. But I didn't throw in a towel, and I listened to his advice towards me, telling me what was righteous to do. I didn't see him get weary in well-doing, so it has given me strength that I can be that special help for my age. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Zechariah 3 and 14. Sing, O daughters of Zion. Shout. Hallelujah. 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 Be glad and rejoice with all your land, O daughters of Israel. We must yeah. rejoice at all times. So, when you're yeah. sick, rejoice. Hallelujah. When you have aches and pains, give toll. Yes. In all things, give toll. You say, well, Ima Rafi, do you have aches and pains? Why, sure I do. Every day. But I don't get weary. I know that's part of getting old. And taking care of myself is part of being faithful and committed unto Almighty God. I take I, uh, the diet that I eat, I'm not going to share that with you, but I make sure I take care of me. I don't eat all the new things they have on the market. They have a new chip for this and a new cookie. Can I tell you, I love Oreo cookies that I do. But do you eat them? Why? No, I don't. I know that's not the best thing for me. As you get older, you have to change your diet. You can't eat everything that you ate when you were young. Because when I was young, I could eat Oreo cookies. And I'd get, get outside and I'd run five or six miles and burn it off. Well, now I'm older. I'm crippled. I have one leg two inches shorter than the other from an accident. So I can't get out and run like I'd like to. And that's not the tough thing for us as getting older either. You have to take care of your knees, take care of your back. Sometimes I can just bend the wrong way and my back goes out. So I'm careful with my movement now. I don't eat everything. Like I said, they have new on the market. I eat a whole food diet. And I make better choices for me. And as we get older, you understand by and by that you can't eat everything. And can I tell you, the, mo the most healthiest drink you can drink is called H2O. When I get up in the morning, that's the first thing 
that goes into a whole raw fair, H2O. And at the end of the day, the last thing that goes into a whole raw fair is H2O. So Yah has given us this body, this vessel that he's supposed to live in, so you must take care of it. He's going to hold you accountable for how you've taken care of you. And if he dwells there, you can't just feed Yahshua junk all the time, can you? No. You say, well, what's junk? Junk in the trunk. Yeah. Eating chips all the time, that's a no-no. Cookies all the time, that's a no-no. True. You have to learn to make better and wise choices. Yes. And as I've gotten older, I know that's true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So a special gift for a special man. When you have a righteous man, and I've seen over the years, when a man is truly committed unto Almighty Yahweh, can I tell you, he's looking for an Isha, then y'all will give him a true daughter of Zion. One without fight, one that's going to honor him, one that truly knows her place in Torah truth. He won't be drawn to that woman by the way she dresses. If she's got her boobs out, and she's got on a mini dress, and she's got on four inch heels, you'll know to run from that one. Because that's not truly a daughter of Zion. Once you come to the knowledge of the truth, you know you can't dress like that. Yeah. When I see a woman like that, I know she doesn't know truth. That's right. She's looking for a meal ticket. Yeah. Hallelujah. But a true daughter of Zion, she won't dress that way. So like I said, I've been young. And now I'm old, and I've seen many women that say they know y'all, but you can tell in the dress they do not. So a gift from Yahweh, that is of the greatest value. A special helper, her delight is in her husband. She is more valuable and beautiful when she grows older. So once you find a woman when she's been walking, if you've been walking this way since you were 20, and you're 40, you will know in that woman's dress, yes. her actions, her deeds. So if you see a daughter and you know that she said, I love Yahweh, she has on a mini dress and she's got earrings from here to there, her hair's dyed pink and blue on one side, you know she doesn't know Almighty Yahweh. It's true. She's learned those things from the fallen angels yes. that were cast out of Shemaiahs. And those Fallen angels taught women unclean practices. The jewelry, the makeup, that, that's why Jezebel is in the book. She painted herself up to draw men. Yeah. So when you paint yourself up, you know that's what you're trying to do. Yeah. You're trying to draw someone else's husband. Or you're trying to draw another man. We don't have to draw another man. No. If you already have an ish, why do you need to draw another man? You don't. You don't. You take great delight in your ish. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So a wife is a virtue. She delights in her husband. Her distression and skills put fat on his bones. Shirak 26 and 14. A silent wife is a gift of Yahweh. And there is nothing so precious as a, as a disciplined nephew. A modest, shamed face and faithful wife adds virtue to virtue. Her continue, her content mind and chaste nephesh cannot be vain. Did you all hear that? Yes. Her mind is content. Her faithfulness adds fat to her husband's bones. She's not looking at somebody else's ish. Because she has one. She takes great delight when she sees him comes in from a hard day's late. Yes. She takes great delight in that. There's no phoniness, there's no pretense. Can I tell you when I, when Rayak and I first got married, and when he come home from a day's late, I would my heart would be so fat. His first job was a, he was, I think back then they called it a uh, it was for the sanitation department, but they was, had a uh, machine that sucked up leaves. Mm -hmm. And when he would come home, sometimes he would get home at 12, and I would be so happy to see him. 
he'd be dirty, and I thought that was the best thing ever. He would go in and take a shower, and I'd been already prepared dinner. And he'd sometimes sit down, he would eat just a small amount, because he would be, eat the rest of it later on that evening, because I had a third shift job. But I would be so house, the house would be clean, and everything would be in order. And we had plants, and he would play music for the plants. He took care of the house plants. I didn't because I didn't know anything about house plants. But even that, during that time of my life, I was so happy and I was so content. And can I tell you, I'm still happy. Hallelujah. And I'm still content. Hallelujah. I have house plants now and I have plants outside, but I take care of them now because I learned from here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Sharak 26 and 16, like the sun rising in the heights of Yahweh, so is the beauty of a tub wife and all her well-ordered home. So daughters, when I tell you your home should be well-ordered, it should. When your husbands come home from work, your house should be well-ordered. The children should be quiet. Everything should be immaculate in its place. That's how it should be. Living in a place like this, what else do you have to do? We don't sit around and watch television all the time. Well, you have computers, why shouldn't we do? We know when to watch, watch them and we know when to shut them down. Our mind shouldn't be given over to that all the time. But our mind should be given over to our daily bread, the legend, this, this Torah truth. That's what our mind should be given over to. And we should govern our rule of at all the time. You say, what is Ruah? The spirit. The spirit that you operate in. Yes. Hallelujah. So she is like the shining lamp on the Kodesh candlestick. So is the beauty of the face of one in her white age. So as we get older daughters, there is a beauty to us. Not like the world. We'll have to paint ourselves up. You don't have to, uh, I saw a uh, capture on a young woman's, on her uh, YouTube video, she was saying, eyes without false eyelashes is like cake without icing. Well, can I tell you, it distracts your vision. True. You look like the cow in the field. Mm -hmm. That's what you look like. That's not what your, where your beauty comes from. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you, your beauty doesn't come from your hair extensions. You're causing... Indian women and Asian women, they sell their hair to make money so that they can feed their children. We don't even consider, I never considered that, and that's the truth. You say, well, yeah, I used to wear hair extensions too. But once I realized that these women are selling their hair so that they can feed their children, I didn't want to go that way. My beauty didn't come from that. My beauty comes from me obeying Torah truths, honoring my husband and taking heed to his instruction. That's where your beauty comes from. Not showing off your big legs. Every man don't need to see your big legs. You cover yourself. Yes. I've learned that over these years. You, and can I tell you, even before I came to the knowledge of truth, I knew that if I wanted to draw somebody, you put your, your two tight breeches on. You let your stuff hang out. But once I got a husband, I wasn't walking in truth, but once I got a husband, I knew I needed to cover myself up. We went out shopping one day, and I met one of Rayok's old friends. Well, he was a friend of mine, too, growing up. And the first thing he said, girl, you got it popping. Can I tell you, it made me feel so ashamed. I was ashamed. And I wanted to run and hide. Him saying that in front of my house, that wasn't a badge of honor for Rayok. It brought for I was ashamed. And can I tell you, just by him saying it, I started making changes in my life. I said, when I'm like that, I'll just be like that around Ray. But not around, I didn't want nobody else to say that to me. When you're like that, Doris, I'm telling you, you know that that's an unclean spirit that still dwells within you. I only want to be beautiful for Ray. I don't have to get nobody else's approval but his. Hallelujah. It says, what is a virtuous daughter of design. What does that really mean? What is her worth? Well, Yahweh declares what her worth is. First of all, she is a crown to the one that she is acquainted with. She is a crown. She is a crown to her ish. Not a crown to every man, 
but to her age. We must understand that. You know, when you're out there in the world, you're so polluted, if you don't ever come to the knowledge of the truth, that's how you always think. You think, well, if I've got to get this man's approval and that. No, just the man you're married to. That's the only approval you need. You know, I hear Zakim ben me. he calls his wife his cherry because she is his cherry. Nobody else is but he is. Well, what about this? No, that's his cherry. Yes. And the only one can say that is him. Yes. So as your husbands leave in the morning, as they greet you, and when uh, they say that this is my baby, or what does Zakim call you? His, precious. Uh, his yes. precious. He calls his issue his precious. To me, that is precious. Yes. It is. To hear your, your uh, issues greet you in the morning, it's so beautiful. Yes. Yeah. You say, well, you and Ray don't say anything. We don't have to say anything. When he leaves the house, I've already seen him, so I don't have to say anything. True. I've been old and I'm young. I've been young and now I'm old. Hallelujah. I know what to say and I know what not to say. Hallelujah. His, my thoughts are always on him and his thoughts are always on me. So I don't have to. I don't have to say nothing great. I don't have to say nothing fabulous, because my thoughts are. And he knows my thoughts are always on him. Yes. Proverbs twelve and four. Virtuous, strength, might, wealth, ability. A woman is a crown to her husband, but she that makes a shame is as rottenness in his bones. So if you ever make your issue shame. It should, it should bring about a shame to you. It's, it brings about rottenness to your issues. Because everybody knows that you've said that or you've done yeah. that, especially in a place like sure. this. Everybody knows. And you can, can I tell you, the only one can make that right is you. Yes. You're the only one can make that right. Yes. You can make your crooked paths straight. Yes. You can purpose in your heart that will never happen again. Hallelujah. And it doesn't happen. You just practice what is right to do. Not sometime, not once a month, yes. every day. Let your light shine yes. as a daughter of Tazaya. The number of your issues days will be double when you bring up unto him. Shirak 26 and 2. A virtuous woman is loyal. A wife rejoices her husband, and he will be complete in his old years with shalom. When you make your husband's heart merry, it's because you're doing the righteous thing. As I was uh, sharing with my brother, I said, I wish I had had 10 sons. I know what to do now, but it's too late. But I would have brought, can I tell you, they'd have been like 10 soldiers. You said, how can you say that? Because I knew what my heart meant. I knew what I had purpose in my heart to do with those sons. And I wanted to bring honor to my husband. I did. I didn't want them to look like me. I wanted them all to look like him. Yes, I did. And I would have, yeah, I wanted to live in the country in a big old house. And I wanted to have a garden to raise my own food and to bake and to cook in the kitchen if I had to cook all day. Well, I'm just about doing that, cook True. all day. I take great delight in cooking. Yes. My favorite thing is to bake desserts. I love baking desserts. I don't get weary in doing that. I know you just can't live on desserts, I know that. But I love working with my hands. And that was I wanted the 10 sons to bring honor to my age. But can I tell you, being in a place like this, I've had those 10 sons. True, yeah. yeah. I have. And the young men here, they honor me as Ima Raphael. Yes. So still, y'all honored what my heart was set on. Yes. We do live in the country because I, was never, I had said it in my mind, I would never live in South Carolina. Well, here I am in Jefferson, South Carolina. And can I tell you, I am happy, happy, happy. And I told the y'all, because whatever he does, he does it well. So I have no complaints today. Hallelujah. Yeah. Proverbs 18, 22. Whoso finds a wife, finds a tough thing, and obtains favor of Almighty God. 
So when you find a wife, when a man truly finds a wife, he has favor of Almighty God. He doesn't have to worry about her bringing shame on him or dishonor or her looking at another man. He don't have to worry about that. He knows when he comes home, everything will be in order. And we must understand that, daughters. And we're going to be that special present help from our Almighty God. We must practice toward truth. Everything about you that's not pleasing before Almighty God, you will empty those things out of your life. The Hebrew women, they were lively. When uh, Pharaoh had said, kill the firstborn, well, can I tell you, when the midwives got there, they said the Hebrew women are so lively, they're not in labor long. When we get there, they've already brought forth a child. So we as Hebrew women of Israel El, we should be lively. Hallelujah. Yes, we should be lively. Hallelujah. There should be no laziness about her, about yes. us. Can I tell you, yeah, I'm old, but I'm lively. Yes. When things need to get done, I know how to do it. Yes. True. I pace myself. Yes. You know, Emma Sabe is older than all of us. Yes. Can I tell you, she's lively. Yes. She's, I'm, she's like I say, she's not been over. When there's something need to be done, she'll say, Ema, you just tell me what to do. Yes. She don't ever say, well, I don't know what to do. Or just go pick up something. No, she'll say, you tell me what to do. Yes. We don't want nobody to tell us what to do. No. Well, I don't want instructions from her. We don't want nobody to tell no. us what to do. She will say, tell me what yes. to do. Yes. So we got to get there. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. got to see that we don't know everything. Can I tell you, Doris, when we started this way of life 25 years ago, no, I didn't know anything about community life, but I was willing. And I said, Ray, whatever you tell me to do, I will do. We had other uh, daughters that were here that knew how to, uh, they had been on a farm. They knew how to uh, kill chickens, how to pluck chickens. They knew about cleaning fish. They knew about uh, cleaning goat. I didn't know about those things, but I was willing to learn. And I said, whatever I need to do, you just tell me. And there were daughters here that would show me. Yes. Because I'd never lived on a farm. Yeah, I know about city life, but I didn't know anything about this country life. But I told her, y'all, yeah, because I was willing and obedient, I learned. And there were things that I learned from my mother. My mother was a country woman. And there were things that she learned that she uh, showed the daughters here how to do. So I give y'all told out for all things he has showed us over these many years. I have no complaints. I'm still willing and obedient to learn. Hallelujah. And I'm going to die that way. We must always be willing and obedient so that we can learn. I don't ever want to be ever uh, learning but never come to the knowledge of the truth. It didn't take us 50 years. It didn't take us five years. I can go anywhere and observe and watch and know how to perform. Yes. We must be that way also. You can't continue to make excuses. You can't do this and you can't do that. There was a Cain and there was an Abel. Hallelujah. And I am more than Abel. Hallelujah. 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 Only those yeah. that are able shall eat the tub of the land. Yes. Hallelujah. As we have harvest that comes in, we have, at this time we have collars, kale, Carrots, uh, corn, okra. We've had not an abundance, but we've had much okra to come in. Everybody here loves okra. Yes. We haven't had it fried, but we've had it stir fried. And we all, even the children, take great delight in the harvest that comes in from the garden. True. So as we learn these things, and as we do whatever it takes when it comes to harvest time, we put back. Yes. That's why when it gets cold, we don't fret when it gets cold. If we get snowed in, we don't worry because there's always something put back yes. that we're able to eat during those winter months. So I told y'all for that. I'm going to stop here, daughter. There is more to this. Rick said he was uh, had some more things he wanted me to speak on. The feast days are upon us. So I won't probably speak back with you again until in the month of September. But we will uh, be sharing with you all our, the things we've gotten from the harvest. We'll show you our young daughters preparing in the kitchen. 
because we have young girls that love to cook. Saria and Hadassah loves cooking in the kitchen. Yes. They love making desserts. But, so we're going to share those things with you. Yes. Yesha, how old are you, Yesha? Eleven. Yesha is eleven. He loves working with Rayak, him and Asher. Asher is, how old are you, Asher? Nine. He's nine years old. And they've been cleaning out the pond for Rayak. So we do, we work with our hands. Yes. Hallelujah. We work with our hands here at Yeshua Community. So we will get back with you. We're going to be celebrating the feast days of Almighty Yah. The feast day honor Almighty Yah and Yahshua HaMashiach. So we will get back with you in the month of September with great things that we have done. We have been doing a lot of baking here and we put back our desserts. Yes. So we will be partaking of that with the feast days of Almighty Yah. So daughters of Tazayan, we say greetings to you from all the sisters here at Teshua Community. To community. We will get back with you in the month of September and share with you the great things that Almighty Yah has done for us. Just remember, let your light shine. Let me read a scripture before we close out. Hallelujah. And this is coming from Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that tough and acceptable and perfect will of Almighty God. So let your mind be renewed with this Torah truth. And again we say shalom, shalom. See you in the month of September. Yahweh Barak. Yeah.